While the film has received extraordinary amounts of praise, you know, it got four stars from the Washington Post, it's also actually been critiqued for what some see as a one-sided and, and sometimes narrow portrayal of the Egyptian revolution. You know, Max Fisher of the Washington Post actually wrote an uh, entry detailing his issues with the film. I just want to read you one part of what he says. I mean, he said, quote, the film's tendency to be remarkably generous towards its activist subjects while repeatedly and uncritically recycling the darkest stereotypes and conspiracy theories about supporters of one of Egypt's largest political movements, the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, you know, do you agree that you are uncritical? You know, would you be more critical now and, and perhaps more lenient towards the Muslim Brotherhood in your telling, given what's happened since? It's not about us filmmakers being critical or uncritical. It's about following a human story and trying to be as truthful and represent your character's journeys as authentically and as truthfully as possible. So whatever Ahmed's feelings were towards the Muslim Brotherhood at the time, we expressed those feelings. So the judgment that I leave to when I make a judgment towards my film, when I'm watching it, um, is that I show it to the characters and I ask the characters, have I been able to translate or give it, given people a glimpse of what it felt like to go through this experience? And if they've said yes, then I feel like I've done my job. Yeah. And if they say no, then I go back and I start re-editing the film because it didn't feel true to their experience. Now, there's many, many, many different, I mean, this, this, this revolution covered, you know, involved 80 million people. There's absolutely no way that I was trying or that we were trying to tell a story of 80 million people. We were trying to tell a story of three guys in a square, one of them being Megdi, who's actually a Muslim Brotherhood member of 25 years and somebody that is loved and that people ask about um, when the film's finished and that people continue to write us and ask about. And I think also, you know, what's been amazing is, 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 is as Jahan says, is really, at the end of the day, this, the only people who, who can hold us accountable with this film in terms of portrayal are the characters that are in it. And this film is about three central characters, Ahmed, Magdi, and Khalid, and their relationship. And Magdi is the member of the Muslim, is the character who is, happens to be a 25 year member in the Muslim Brotherhood. And he and his family were extremely proud of the film and felt that the film honored and represented what they went through and what their experience was. So I really, you know, I, I think that a lot of, when, when foreign journalists speak on behalf of, of a political group in Egypt as though they represent their, uh, as, as though they're like the spokespersons, it's very strange. And I think that, you know, they should actually let the people of Egypt decide on that point, how they feel about the representation. And I think, you know, and I think that we're very honored to see that the, the wide range of support for the film in Egypt has come from so many different people of such different backgrounds. We've had, we've had people come up to us who have families that are half Muslim Brotherhood, half members of the, of the security state, and come up and said, thank you so much because you've shown, you've reminded us what this fight was about. You've stripped it of just being Brotherhood or secular or army supporter or non-army supporter, and you reminded us what, that this was, this was about the Egyptian people. And all these other names and labels came second. So I think so that that's ironic. the goal of the film, is to, is to remind people that this is a story of the people, for the people, by the people. Mm. And what made Tahrir work is when there was that collective ideology and that support, where people were able, as Magdi says in the film, when we come to Tahrir, we're no longer brotherhood, we're no longer Salafi, we're no longer, uh, uh, you know, anything, we're Egyptians. And yeah. that's, that was the state of Tahrir. I think, you know, I think that's a good point. I, I, I suppose just sort of uh, to say that Max Fisher, obviously, he was there. He's not Egyptian, but, he, you know, he was in Cairo and he was covering it. But I, I do take your point, this idea of it being, uh, you know, a, a, certainly a narrative about the, the numerous different types of Egyptian uh, who were there, you know, during the time that you were filming. Um, we've got a uh, comment, and actually. I think... No, go, no, go for it, Harry. I, th I just want to say something on that point, because it's a very interesting point, actually, because, you know, I think this is a greater, a larger conversation about... Uh, political commentary analysis versus uh, versus cultural commentary and analysis. And if you look at that same the same uh, uh, newspaper, the Washington Post, we had three people write about the film: uh, Anne Horanday, Steve Dollar, and Max Fisher. Steve Dollar and Anne Horanday are people who write about culture and art and film. Max Fisher is a political blogger. Um, I think that when you look at a film 
as a political analysis, you, you are treating it as a research paper, which is maybe what a lot of the DC pundits are more used to. But when you, when, you, when you look at it as a piece of art, you understand the role of art in society. There's a difference between art and journalism, and we by no way claim to be a uh, full-on journalistic account of what happened in Egypt, because nobody could represent such a thing.